Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and uh, we tried, man. So things did not go too great for round two of the PGP, the Pokemon Grand Prix. And uh, you can just see on the screen that uh, we got almost just clean swept, just straight up. Actually, we started out 0 and 6, and at the very last second, Super Salmon 93 ended up getting a win, our only win for the week. Now, I almost just wanted to leave it there and not even go into any battles, but. Uh, Honestly, I think uh, just to get kind of get a feel for how this week went, we can go into my own battle. Uh, all the other battles were fine. Um, everybody played as well as they could. We got some really interesting matches in. It was a lot closer uh, than it would look like on paper. I think just, again, my battle was a fantastic example of how uh, this week ended up going for us. So I think we can just get into my match, right? We can just see um, the types of threats that my opponent has. Um, I just had the Slowbro, Clefable, Tyranitar, uh, Garchomp. Tornadus and uh, Kartana. So a lot of uh, huge threats. Kartana has a really decent time here, but there are a few mons that just kind of stop it in its tracks. And uh, for me, I don't, really don't have any answers for Tornadus. So, I mean, the best thing, the closest thing that I have to that would be the Alola Muck, but uh, I have to keep that healthy in order to not let the Tornadus just beat me. But other than that, um, just see the Infernape, Garchomp, Hitmontop, uh, Kart my own Kartana, and Jolteon. So, really, Jolteon is my only way to offensively beat the Tornadus, and a little muck is going to be my only real defensive switch into a Tornadus. Uh, I'm going to get into the match uh, in just a second, but you guys can see, I really do want to set up the conditions for my Kartana to kind of win here, and uh, it does look like I'm going to lead off with my Infernape, and he's going to lead off with uh, the Tornadus, which obviously is never going to be a great matchup situation, so... I feel like I haven't been um, matching up great in my leads just in general. I've been in a little bit of a slump just in general, but uh, I'm going to see how, what I can do here. Um, honestly, I wanted to bluff Scarf. I wanted to click U-turn, see what he would do, but I, it felt like I couldn't risk it. I felt like Inverni was too offensively important for the makeup of this match, and uh, I felt like I couldn't really risk anything here. I knew mo his most likely play would be to U-turn, because uh, I either reveal that I'm Scarfed and go for U-turn and do no damage, or uh, he finds an opportunity to just uh, hit something on the switch. And so, but I really couldn't risk it, so I just go straight into the Muck, and that allows him to go into the Garchomp, which forces me to switch out again, which kind of sucks. But uh, it will let me go, get a minus one on the hit on top, and so now uh, I'm thinking I'm okay, but he goes for the Swords Dance. And I'm honestly terrified at this point because uh, Garchomp, I really don't have any defensive checks to the Garchomp, and I can certainly just kind of go through my team. I do go for the close combat just to get some sort of damage on him, and, and, and just to not let him get up multiple sword dances for absolutely free. But uh, he will go for the Z-Tectonic Rage, which will pretty much seal up the KO, uh, which... Oh, man, again, I'm losing one of my best offensive checks to physical attacks, whereas Muck is really my best check to kind of um, those special attacks. But uh, I'm really starting to lose checks really darn early. Uh, my Jolteon is going to be able to come in, and this is an expert belted Jolteon, I believe, if I, if I remember correctly. And um, the fact that he should be just max speed, max attack really does kind of ensure that an HP Ice would KO. But he brings in the Tyrannosaur, which is a totally, totally fair play. And it will allow me to Volt Switch right on out, but it's not going to... But I'm still not going to have many solid defensive checks to this Tyranitar, especially after I just let my Hitmon top go down. So I'm going to have to figure out what I want to let get hit really, really hard after I click Volt Switch. But um, I know I'm going to need Jolteon, right? As long as the Tornadus is up, I really cannot um, play at all riskily with my... Uh, with my Jolteon. Now, I believe, if I remember correctly, I have like a max... Um, HP or close to max HP, close to max defense, Garchomp with leftover. So I take that really, really well. And uh, it'll, and I kind of expected him to want to switch out because I thought he would kind of fear an, an incoming earthquake, but he just stays in, uh, dodges a toxic, and clicks Ice Punch on me, which uh, is pretty darn bad, right? I really could have used this Garchomp a lot for the rest of this match. Um, and could have maybe taken a hit from the Kartana, depending on what type of Kartana it was. But just a really big defensive monster uh, with a rough skin chip. All types of things going for the Garchomp in, the, in this matchup. But um, it's going to allow me to bring in my Infernape. You turn out because I know he didn't want to risk his, the Tyranitar anymore. Uh, taking a close combat. It just brings in the Slowbro, which allows me to bring in my Jolteon. 
and uh, he really doesn't have anything to prevent me from being able to Volt Switch uh, pretty darn freely here. As he goes into the Clefable, he could have gone into the Garchomp, but I think he knows that my Jolteon has a little bit of something to be able to uh, KO with the HP Ice. Um, I, I think all I needed was the Expert Bell, and I did have um, just modest Expert Bell in this situation because I really only built my... I, I really only had, it, had to build my Jolteon to creep a speed creeping tornadoes and that's exactly what he did and my um jolteon did in fact outspeed his tornadoes in this matchup um but i bring this thing in and uh i wasn't really afraid of the club table per se but i knew that he would want to switch out and i only went for the z uh smart strike because i thought that he might want to switch into tornadoes and i only ko tornadoes if it's like not really bulky at all and i do ko uh it was a reasonably offensive tornadoes and i am able to ko this thing right off the bat which is insane to me right that is exactly what i needed to happen because i really never had many good plays against the tornadoes and so here he brings in the slow row which just screams rindo berry to me i knew it was going to be rindo berry and it was in fact rindo berry i was always going to be able to really kind of take an ice beam and uh just ko this thing through rindo berry if i had stayed in uh, and it truly baffled me. He never had flamethrower on the set. I thought maybe he was over predicting on something, but he never had flamethrower on the set. So, um, a Rindo Berry Slowbro without flamethrower really did confuse me. I guess he couldn't find a uh, space on the set, but it just really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But regardless, it's going to allow in my um, Jolteon, which is going to allow me to pretty freely uh, maneuver around here. Uh, and I can Volt Switch, but again, I really don't have the best switches into the Ranitar, especially after the Garchomp went down. So, I thought he was I, honestly going to want to switch out. And, uh, now that I, now that I don't even have the Garchomp, I'm going to have to just give up, um, this Alolan Muck to this thing, which is going to be unfortunate. But Alolan Muck was absolutely the most, um, expendable Mon left on my team. But now that's going to let me bring in my Kartana, and it's going to let me get a very free Leaf Blade off. This is a pretty darn free plus one in this situation and honestly now that i know what kind of a set this uh slow bro is i'm more than willing to stay in on the slow bro and leaf blade it twice but he goes into the guard shop instead which um really i don't know i don't know i i had to go for a roll on the leaf blade i was kind of put in that position where i had to do that but uh he's able to just stay in click earthquake he does take the leaf blade and uh, i'm gonna take it out after second leaf blade but it's going to be another round of rough skin damage and if i could have kept this cartana more healthy i think it would have been in a really solid position for uh the rest of his mons but as it was it had to take a decent amount of damage which is going to kind of hurt my positioning for the later game at least that's what i'm thinking now um but he does bring in his own cartana and uh his cortana could in fact be scarfed which is really scary to me that's what i have to assume that it's scarfed uh secret sword and it's going to be able to uh do a lot of damage to me i can bring in my infernape my infernape is actually going to get crit in this moment and it's going to be pretty darn rough um it's going to be pretty darn rough because now if my um if my infernape is ever in a position to be able to ko something with flare blitz then uh it's gonna burn itself out to flare blitz and that might come into play it definitely will come into play but um i will have to reveal vacuum wave because i didn't feel comfortable enough just going for the u-turn i had to reveal vacuum wave which is a tech um it should ko most cartanas uh outright with it with the expert belt um but i will be able to u-turn into jolteon and jolteon is going to be able to pick up this ko he didn't really didn't want to switch anything else in um especially uh couldn't take the, really couldn't risk any damage on the cartana um and the clefable as well which is going to be the last two mons he has left he will be able to take out my jolteon with a secret sword which is totally totally fine um but i i'm always going to be able to bring in my uh infernape and threaten a ko um this is a mixed infernape a semi-mixed infernape um the only special move it has is vacuum wave but it has i believe 28 uh points of special attack which is just enough with an expert belt to guarantee a ko on a cartana with a moderate in in investment like if it i think i assumed that the cartana was going to speed creep something and then uh reinvest a little bit of it into hp and that form of cartana i can always ko with a vacuum wave but uh now Again, because I'm not in a position to freely Flare Blitz into Clefable, which I kind of had to do in this moment, 
because I was never in that position, uh, I had to switch out into Kartana and uh, try to get something to happen here. But you can see that it gained more health back with leftovers than I did with Vacuum Wave, which is going to be pretty darn important in just a second. So again, this is going to allow my Infernape to come in. Now, um, under most circumstances, I'd be able to just click Flare Blitz and uh, because he would have to respect the Vacuum Wave. In most circumstances, I'd be able to just click Flare Blitz, but because... Uh, because of that crit and I took so much damage, it never even really mattered because any Flare Blitz that I went for, I would have burned myself out to the recoil. Now here you can see, you can see that because earlier in the match, just a few turns ago, he recovered more HP than I did to him with, with Vacuum Wave and I was forced to switch out because of that, um, Flare Blitz recoil, because of the potential Flare Blitz recoil, uh, that ended up being the difference in being able to KO that Clefable. And, hypothetically, if I had more HP, if I was able to Flare Blitz directly into the Clefable a few turns earlier without it getting more uh, Leftovers uh, recovery back, then um, I would have been able to take the recoil and, again, my 28 investment Vacuum Wave would have been able to KO Kartana. I don't like how I positioned myself in the early, in the early game, but in that late game, I think I positioned myself well enough where I could have been able to deal with the Kartana and uh, a few different things. But uh, that crit, I think, really just ended up hurting me quite a bit. And I did what I could. I wasn't even able to take out the Fable, so it was unfortunately going to be a 2-0 instead of a 1-0. But uh, we did what we could. That's going to be uh, my round 2 match. And uh, round 2 as a whole went down 1-6. Uh, and six. We didn't get very many wins in this one. But uh, I want to bounce back with that week 1 win. We are in an okay position to at least stay in that top half, and that top half is going to go to playoffs. So, I am really excited about what our team can do in general, and uh, I like how our teams are built, how they interact, and I just am really excited to see what they can do in the future. But uh, with that, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, I almost wanted to leave it at just putting up a screenshot of that spreadsheet showing how badly we lost and having that be the video, have it be like 30 seconds long and call it there but i wanted to do a little bit of something at least show off that we tried our best we fought in these matches but in these matches like mine that you just saw uh it was really difficult to kind of bounce back and uh we just had to play against some stuff that uh we really weren't expecting as a group but me in particular i felt like i just made a lot of calls that didn't end up going my way uh he built very differently from what i thought he would have built and uh, just made some plays that I would not have expected, so it really caught me off guard. And uh, like I said, I don't think any of us played badly, but we just, I think, got caught off guard just as a team. Uh, but once again, that's going to be it for us. Um, we'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the League War. Uh, and I'll be back with more weeks of the ICBA and the UBL and uh, some other stuff coming up really, really soon. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And once again, out.